the 26 million, uh, the idea is that 18 million is for open calls. So this is like a, a pattern I see that's becoming more common with European uh, calls, is that they put quite a bit of money on the table, and then in the call text, uh, a significant percentage of that money has to be given to smaller projects. It's, it's an, I, I find it an interesting way of working because in a way the, the, the commission is handing the work of managing all of these calls to the people who are going to apply for the money. It's really, it's a kind of subcontracting uh, uh, game, I think, yeah. But it's, it's interesting because we, we have also in our past have said, well, uh, we, we uh, let's say we know what our communities need, so we could probably uh, judge what the and other proposals um, are asking for better. We'll see. But I know Attract was like this in EOS Life. There was something like this. I, I know there are a few other projects like this. And what we wanted to discuss today with you, because this is a unique opportunity altogether, when uh, before we have to write this proposal, which has to be submitted on the sixth of March, is what should we do in this call? So you have these open calls. Uh, the open calls will be uh, between 100 and 250,000 euros with a duration of 12 to 24 months. And the benefits you can see are to come together. Uh, also, first of all, there's, there's one part. So if you take away the 18 million, there's still 7 million. Of the 7 million, 1 million is for consolidation in each cluster. So what we call consolidation is up to us to define, and that's what we're partly going to discuss here. Yeah? Oh, Nicolas, yes, yeah, sorry. Is he here? Nicolas Soler. Sorry, there's your chair. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so there have been some ideas already proposed, but I thought instead of me always talking, maybe we start already with the panel, because we have one hour. It sounds like a lot, but it goes quickly. Uh, so I don't know if we maybe start with the f uh, physical panel and then the virtual panel. Uh, Majid, you want to start? I mean, the, the question is, what should we do in this call as a pan cluster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, a challenging question. First, starting by introducing myself, I'm Majid Unsi from Soleil. I'm the co-lead of Work Package 4 in the Expense Project. And I'm also involved in the working group uh, three of LIPS. Mm. And my main work at Sole is helping my uh, director of uh, strategy and information systems, mm. Brigitte Gaget, to implement the data policy. Mm. And uh, so the main work is trying to get scientists to fair data, DUIs, mm. DMPs, and so on. Now, to answer the question, I, honestly, my feeling is it's a very challenging call. Mm. And it may seem negative, it's not, because I'm optimistic as you, but it's important to set up what are the challenges. Because we are ending our two projects, mm. Parents and Expands. We did a lot of work but you have also the feeling that we are at the step where a lot of work mm. is just about to start. Mm. Mm. To have all these tools, use it, widely use it, mm. to have them used by the scientists, and to have them really su sustain it. So one of the goals mm. we may look for through this call is to try naively to look for a way to sustain them only. Mm -hmm. But the other challenge is that we are asking us, they are asking us to work with the other clusters, mm -hmm. which also developed a lot of things around these same topics. And so we will have to try to think about calls mm -hmm. where we go not in concurrence with what they have done. Mm -hmm but uh, to look for some complementarity between our work and their work, which we really don't know yet. In my side, I don't really know what they have done in this <laughs> cave, what they have done in the other clusters. Okay. Now, 
there are ways to think about this stuff. Uh, to go towards what's the goal of failed data. We want our scientists to try to get at as much as value of data, mm. to start doing science uh, with interdisciplinary disciplines, mm. to try to use data produced in disciplines and used in others. So there are ideas where we can think about calls where we raise the fact of inter interoperability. We have, for example, a standard, Nexus. We don't know if the others are using this standard or not. So the way to go further is to try to think about interoperability of data formats. This is a way to go. And also, probably work with, with the other clusters about new ways of doing data analysis, mixing different experimental techniques. The, all the scientists in our facilities are mm -hmm. talking about this, but we do not have yet solutions for that. And I thought about another idea, which was raised by the very interesting interesting discussion about how to get scientists mm. to what we are producing, developing. Mm. Maybe I think we can reserve some calls to develop ways of uh, motivating mm. scientists to share data, to be analyzed by others probably from other disciplines, and uh, to let them see concretely what is the benefit of opening their data. So this is ideas yeah, we yeah, can yeah. talk about later. Uh, you see this more, uh, this is like part of the open call part then. Yeah. yeah. One, one, one idea which ties up with that, which we've been discussing with other uh, clusters is having kind of hackathons or data, data hackathons. So you could imagine in that idea you get scientists together from different domains who are interested in seeing how their data can be yeah. uh, used by others and, and you know, create some uh, uh, connections there between yeah. them, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh. I think we should limit each uh, intervention to five minutes, then go back to five the discussion. Minutes? Yeah. okay, good, so I'm... I'm um, so you hold the mic a bit closer. I'm the coordinator of expense, <laughs> as you might have noticed. And uh, on, on top, I am um, involved in PANOSC because I'm, I'm a, a service provider for PANOSC, uh, DAISY. Uh, so, and um, my opinion is that I, I actually do not belong here because you PAN people are my customers. Yeah, so, and I would always prefer to let the customer speak because it's about them. Mm. However, sitting here, <laughs> um, as I'm from a laboratory which is different from uh, from the others, uh, which has a lot of sciences in it. Mm. So we have high energy physics and we have uh, EMBL, we have biology and we have astrophysics mm. at DAISY. I have a particular interest in the EOSC, which is not the EOSC itself. Mm. But the point is that the EOSC is trying to harmonize certain services. Yeah? And it is not just to do it. But for the research infrastructure like DAISY, this will significantly simplify our work. Because when the core services are all some kind of harmonized, yeah, we can just reuse the underlying services, reuse them for whatever science we are, we are serving. Yeah. So, and this is currently not the case. So we have WSG and they have their own stack. We have the, the CTA, mm. they have their own stack. We hope to get the SKA having their own stack photon science, mm. completely different. Yeah. And the idea of the EOS is by accident maybe, matching with the idea of, a, of such a big research infrastructure, mm. which consolidate the AI, AI, consolidate the data access, consolidate the data transfer, mm. having, and now coming to the third point, not only technical things, but the current problem for us is that we cannot come up with a reasonable uh, data policy mm. because, so we su submitted it to our director and he said, yeah, but we are not a photon science uh, lab only. 
So whenever there's a data policy, it has to match everything else, all the other sciences. So go back to school, find a solution for that. Yeah. And if in the EOS we would find some kind of a high level description of policies, data management plans and so forth, which would um, which would could be applied to more than just one mm. science, that would be fantastic for a laboratory like us. And of course, I believe like old fashioned, I believe in the idea of Europe. Mm. So I would really like to have a European uh, European mm. science mm. base which we, where we can compete against mm. other big continents, <laughs> so <laughs> which gives us a little bit of advantage. Yeah. 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 So this might be a little bit um, romantic, yeah. but I think uh, that would be a, that would be a good idea. So and I would really take. Um, I'm, I agree with Majid, of course. I would take all our results, whether this is the search API, the harvesting, the policies, mm. and the visa portal. That doesn't necessarily have the visa portal, but some portal. Yeah, the data management, the AI. Mm. Take this into this 0101, yeah, and try to find a common ground with Expanse. That probably is easy. Um, and uh, mm. you see, this is this for me. This would be of mm. a big advantage. Okay, I find that interesting. We still got time, so I, 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 I take advantage of asking you a further question. If do you think that's the clusters should go do that instead of handing that job over to the e infrastructures? The, the the, you see, the clusters are kind of paving the way for the science. Mm. So the infra the infrastructures like Daisy, for mm. example, we only have very very little influence. Mm. Yeah? If you talk about the E infrastructure like um, WLCG mm. or SKN and so forth, they probably right now look at the result of mm. this 101. Yeah. I think they are not, you cannot force them to do anything. So mm. if we are not convincing in this call, everyone will do what, whatever they like. Mm. CERN has a, a history in doing whatever they like. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> so you either are a, a little bit in line, mm. you are of benefit for mm. them, or they will just ignore you. Mm. Yeah. So the, the, it's, a, it's a tricky question. Is O101 doing it or are the e-infrastructure mm -hmm. doing it? It depends. If you're good, they will follow. It's like WLCG for the experiments. Mm -hmm. yeah. The experiments at CERN do not have to follow WLCG. But in certain areas, WLCG mm -hmm. was so good mm -hmm. that they rely on their results. And mm -hmm. this absolutely the same will happen here. Okay, so yeah, no, it's interesting to take this, the, it's a, the model of WLCG and expand it to this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're happy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jean-François. Okay, Jean-François Perrin from uh, ESRF, uh, involved in Panosk. Um, there is two aspects. So there is the. Um, I think we should take benefits of working together with the other clusters. In the history of the PAN, this is probably the first time. Um, if you look to EOSC, there is one part which is missing, which has not been discussed, which is not part of EOSC core, is the data transfer. And data transfer in view of EOSC and composability of services. Um, <clears throat> if you want to realize the dream from Vincent, this is typically uh, a missing point. So outside of the 01, the 01, there will be also some procurement activities. Started by the EC. <laughs> this is on the table for now. Very few information about that, but there is a part on data transfer. My only fear about that that is we never run food specification altogether. Uh, this is what has been done for AI, and currently it's not anymore our business. Uh, AI, the the hard work is done outside of the project, and that's probably good because we want something that could communicate uh, between the communities. This work has not been done for the data transfer. Um, there is many communities with uh, other uh, clusters uh, in terms of users. We have users from EOS Life, we have users from Andre Fair, very, a lot of uh, cross users uh, between the communities. Uh, in terms of technology, they use the same as us. We have the same model, people transfer the data back to home. Uh, here we have to focus on something which is different uh, for us. The case of escape is probably different, but I think this is one topic. Mm. We can also imagine on some topics which are more consolidation of what has been done in the Panosco expanse. Uh, <clears throat> and something in my view that could uh, 
uh, could be extremely interesting is this is the common portal for the data and the common search uh, for the data. Um, this is, if you look to it, except Umbrella, this is the first common services that we really have in place. Um, so it could be handled in the sub calls, uh, but it's probably better if it is done uh, as a consolidation activity um, for zero one zero one. We can think about many other things, but there is other calls around zero one zero two that will focus on uh, software. If you look to what has been done by the different clusters, I think Escape again uh, has a strong activities on that side. It could be interesting. There is also zero one zero three and uh, and all others focused on the publication, DMPs, this side of things. Okay, uh, that's very one. good. Okay, thanks, Nicola. Hello, uh, Nicolas, uh, scientific data management uh, at Alba. So I was mainly involved in the work package two from Expanse, which is about metadata, uh, data management plan, policies, etc. Although I've been following what was happening in the other work packages. So um, for us, these two projects have brought a lot in terms of uh, implementation of all these these tools that have been that have been designed in Expanse. <coughs> and actually, I wouldn't talk uh, about consolidation, but implementation right now. This is the phase that we are reaching, mm -hmm. but we suddenly have to stop communicating because the project <laughs> is coming to an end. So for me. The first thing would be to maintain this communication and to help each other implementing all this. Especially, um, probably I'm biased because I was more in Wapakash too, but I think on the um, building universal standards about how we, we define our metadata, uh, scientific metadata, is still to be done. This is something we want to do locally, but we want to um, we want to homogenize to keep a homogenized approach with other facilities if possible. So having the same names for, for the same parameters for each technique. Um, otherwise, I think reusability is, is what we want to achieve with this. And uh, I think data catalog shouldn't just expose public data that are sitting there. But uh, as you were saying, Hackathon advertised this data for, for um, competition for, for challenges like uh, Kaggle is doing, for instance, yeah. uh, that would be a, a way to go. So, yeah, um, okay. implementation is the key. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think also from what I've seen, uh, Alba says, you know, there's all the stuff out there, but now you have to get it somehow into, uh, into your facility working yeah? yep. and connected. Yeah. But I'm wondering also about the metadata. So two comments is uh, we've had discussions with uh, EOSC Life about the ontology for instruments. There are many instruments which are similar and uh, it's always growing. And I think this is the work in Expands on PanNet and they were very interested to uh, join and, and create a common ontology for all of these, for, for the whole cluster, yeah? for all instruments. Yeah? So I think, you know, this is, this is, these are just ideas that have been put in, uh, thrown in at the moment, but... Uh. Yeah, we will have also the sub-calls, mm. and uh, in the sub-calls, uh, uh, we should have activities mm. that is not only valid for single ARI, mm. but I think that are targeting the community. Mm. I'm thinking only about Visa, mm. which is deployed everywhere. Uh, Panet could be a very good example as well. Mm. Uh, this is a small amount, but it's a lot to hire one, two person mm. to work for 18 months, <coughs> 24 months, maybe maximum on a very specific target without much reporting, mm. uh, um, uh, just being practical. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. I am not involved in this in the in these meetings. Uh, yeah. uh, Sophie is, but um, are you envisioning to give a overall structure for those open calls is that so do, are you in the proposal will there be um, a, a structure mm. where you say okay so many have to mm. work on those in this area mm. or is it completely open can they pick anything because putting all clusters zusammen, the, 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 sorry, zusammen together <laughs> so this will then yeah. cover the entire yeah. um, science in yeah. europe so that could be an arbitrary Yes, no, I, the, this is, well, the, this is the, 
one of the points of this uh, session today yeah. is to get ideas okay. and to get input so that when we write the proposal, I mean, the, the, there's a skeleton, but when we really write the text about what a call, what the calls should uh, cover, yeah. we can be uh, sure that what is coming out of this community is at least covered. Right? Okay, yeah. But at the moment, the, the let's say, how detailed will these... Um, uh, will the this call description be is actually undefined for me. One thing that we have to be aware of is the idea is to that it trickles down to almost any scientific domain covered by these clusters or even further. So the 10 million, I don't know how many, is it 10,000 scientists in Europe or 10 million? I don't know. So if <laughs> Two million. Okay, so some big number. Yeah, potentially any of them can apply. You know, this is, it's not, uh, the, the way the, the, proposal is, is written, uh, the way the call text is written today is not saying you have to belong to one of the clusters. It's really for all no, science. No. I was yeah. more thinking in, in, in terms of categories, not yeah. so much where you belong to. Yeah. So, for example, um, does it have to be cross-cluster? Mm. Mm. Do I have to work on... on, on in yeah, the, this is the, this, these, some of these, uh, co let's say, requirements are in the call text and, and written in there are like... It would be nice to be cross cl cluster, but it's not a it's not okay. a hard requirement. Yeah. Okay. So this is encouraging cross cluster um, collaboration, but not saying only cross cluster. But I think what what we need to do is go online now. We have Giorgio Rossi, and I think it's a very interesting uh, example of a science <coughs> community. So I don't know, can we get uh, someone online? Uh, Giorgio, I saw yes. you earlier. I think you're still there. Yes, I'm here. So, uh, good afternoon um, to all. So, I um, bring the point of view of uh, uh, an infrastructure that is called uh, NFFA and uh, several of the institutions uh, represented there, in fact, belong to NFFA Europe. And it's an so infrastructure. I don't, know, I don't know how many of you know what NFFA is, but uh, Georgia yeah. will explain it briefly. Yeah. I think. It's, it's, it's called uh, nanos, it's, it's a, a European Nanoscience Foundry. So there's a, a collection of many laboratories doing nanoscience working together. Right. So it's but called Georgia, Nanofoundry please, and Fine yeah. Analysis because it covers um, an offer from the synthesis and the growth of samples. Uh, materials, characterization with all the uh, most advanced techniques and includes all the way down to fine analysis uh, with uh, synchrotron radiation, uh, free electron laser, radiation, laser radiation, and neutron radiation. So we uh, offer a, a catalog of uh, uh, about 200 uh, methods, 200 physical methods, mostly experimental, but also theory and uh, over 650 instruments uh, across uh, 23 um, institutions in Europe, uh, research performing institutions, and uh, another 12 uh, third parties. So um, we are addressing the um, fair data issue, of course, but from the point of view of uh, uh, nanoscience. So for us, a, a nanoscience data set for being useful, reused or adopted by others as a reference must contain fair data information about uh, the sample, how it was grown, how it was characterized and eventually uh, the um, final data of, a, of an experiment, uh, of a, um, a specific experiment. And uh, uh, this implies uh, uh, to develop uh, two things. One is uh, a methodology to classify uh, as a fair data sets all of this information. And another one, is to do it in a uh, sustainable way. And uh, so here comes the first of uh, our proposal as a topic uh, for uh, your um, project. And uh, the first topic is to develop uh, a fair by design technology for automatizing metadata acquisition as much as possible. The whole EOSC and, and FAIR data space 
will never occur if it's heavy on the researchers. The researchers will not do it, will not collaborate, will not do it to a sizable amount, and then all the artificial intelligence tools will be ineffective because the data base will not be large enough. So we have to make a big effort on making automatic. We are working on that. We have some resources within our NFFA Europe, but we definitely, the more work on these, the more we realize that it's an important effort and then requires more people and more uh, resources uh, being um, included. So fair by design technology development, that means equipping also the laboratories with uh, uh, new sensors, uh, new IoT, new systems that will uh, automatically uh, determine 80% uh, or 90% of the metadata that you need to associate uh, with the actual uh, experiment data sets. And this is the first proposal. The second proposal briefly is to uh, move towards automatic, uh, automated research workflows, uh, in particular for uh, facilities like our that offer multi-technique um, um, approach. And in fact, uh, we only uh, offer uh, multi-technique approach. We don't uh, uh, accept proposal that use only one thing. We are not in competition with the program committees of uh, photon sources or neutron sources, uh, but in a complex proposal that requires also some access to uh, photon sources, we do provide that. But here again comes the very urgent need to uh, develop, uh, um, to develop, uh, uh, sorry for a telephone coming in at the wrong time, um, uh, to develop an automated uh, mechanism uh, that will be a combination, you know, of uh, uh, automation of experimental setups, uh, remote and virtual access uh, uh, methods that we also need to develop, a combination of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, exploring fair data banks, uh, data analysis, uh, numerical simulation software and etc to uh, start building parts of automated uh, research workflows helping both on the side of the infrastructure uh, managers to uh, reach quickly more quickly uh, feasibility tests across a, a large offer and as well as uh, uh, to simplify or uh, prepare the work for the uh, scientific advisory panels who have to rank the merit of the proposals and of course, helping the users themselves uh, to reach an optimal organization of their um, access uh, to the services. So these are the two uh, titles that I dare uh, proposing to you as a uh, uh, as uh, topics and uh, i can uh, promise that if these topics are there we will participate <laughs> okay For sure. well you know you know how to work you you uh, the topics sure. can always be submitted yeah <laughs> Of I course. Think the, the, the challenge or the, the goal is also to see what can you reuse from one of from any of the cluster projects. So, you know, with the, with the workflows, I know that there's um, uh, Iska EOSC Life has done a lot of work around Galaxy. The other was <coughs> demonstrating that you're building on top of what the clusters have already done in the last four years, I think will strengthen your proposal. So, uh, I think this is, you know, I mean, what, what is, of course, you have the strength of being a scientific uh, community, which has a, a certain maturity, which you can bring in. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. We have a comment uh, yeah. by John Halliwell, yeah. uh, who gives a suggestion for this new EU call for you, for you, for which uh, you would be I start again. My suggestion for this new EU call for you would be that the standards for raw data reuse topic, so the check raw data tools could be applied as a concept mm -hmm. to ensure trust in all your pan raw data, mm -hmm. as it has been for crystallography data files these past decades. 
firstly yeah. our molecular models, then structure factors, and now check row diffraction data for which we are very grateful to Panosk. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John, for this okay. comment. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, these are things, and of course, if it somehow can also link with others, it, I think uh, it could be very, uh, you know, th this is the kind of thing which will uh, would fit in this call. Yeah. So we also have Giuseppe Brandino, who was, I don't know if you wanted to make a comment as well, Giuseppe. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. I'm trying to start the video. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Giuseppe Brandin and I am Data Management Access Coordinator of the NFFA Europe Project. I just want to add a little bit of what George already said. I mean, what we are, I mean, in, uh, as George said, we in, uh, in NFFA, we have 180 different experimental techniques that are pretty diverse from one another. I mean, we go from growth and synthesis to, uh, to characterization. And so what we realized that, uh, I mean, it is it's proving to be a titanic effort to reach standardization and implementation, as Nicolas was saying. So we see these possibilities in Fraiosco as a possibility to um, create uh, some consortium or at least to create some uh, collaboration uh, about building, uh, just to, about standardizing uh, at least uh, uh, families, at least group of techniques. And to do that, we think we need to, um, to reach a sort of consensus between the community that works in that in, in each specific set of, uh, of techniques, uh, such that this could be, um, how can I say? Um, the, um, sorry. So the point of what, what I meant is, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, I mean, what, what we are challenged by, and would be interesting to know, because uh, from what Giorgio said, sounded like you have an advance on us, is sample description. Uh, how, how, yes. How so we, do you have standards already for sample description? We are, so the point is, we are trying to build up some standard, way, but this is what, what I meant is, we really have some for just some families of technique in the NFA offer. Okay, so and what we realize that we need much more effort, much more manpower, much more consensus from the community, from different researchers uh, that are experienced in these uh, uh, in in different techniques. So we are trying to we we are trying to build for a uh, nuclear magnetic resonance for uh, SAM imaging, and for that we are already where we are in the process. We are in the process of approving, uh, let's say, a metadata document and also a Nexus format connected uh, connected to that. But there is still a long way to go, given the amount of techniques that we that we have. But this is this could be a, a good subject for us to work together. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's why we're really interesting in the in this sort of in, in this kind of collaboration. Because we realize that just just with the with the effort that we have in NAP and even just with the and with the player that we have in NAP, we are, it's a big collaboration, but it's still too small to, to do something that's really meaningful and useful for all the researchers using a specific set of techniques. Yeah. Are there, are there anyone in the audience who wants to add something? Some idea for a call or for, uh, you know, it's a very modest amount of money in, in, uh, in real world terms. Rudolf, uh, we have a microphone for you as well. I was just reading the call description while you know, there was this ah, discussion. That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, and then uh, no, I find that call very challenging indeed yeah, yeah. because what you say is correct. No, there is essentially very little money yeah. for the science mm -hmm. clusters and a lot of money for these uh, open mm -hmm. calls and they are real open calls mm -hmm. as you said. The entire scientific community in Europe can apply. Mm. Yep. Uh, it is intended for cross-domain scientific activities. Uh, for me, the first question, an important question to look at is, are the science clusters supposed to support the uh, calls once they are granted? Mm. Of course, beforehand, mm. there's already all yeah. this tremendous work in launching mm. such an ambitious grant activity, mm. selecting then the, uh, of course, the best grants, which yeah. is independent peer review as it is defined. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then my main point is, who will support these mm. grants in their work? If that is on the shoulders of the science clusters, your funding will go into that, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a I very, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if that is right, mm. but I may be completely wrong mm. in my interpretation, you would have only very little in a, mm. in a room for further improving what has so far been developed and uh, bring these things forward, which we have. I would not go in that case into new developments mm. because mm. there's simply no room. Yeah. So yeah. for me, that is maybe the main question which needs to be addressed first. No, no, it's a very good point, and uh, this has been addressed already inside the cluster discussion. So for the other uh, rest of the audience, also we we've had a, we had a meeting last week already with the clusters uh, to start working in 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 depth on the proposal. So we've been discussing it, but now we started writing. And this, um, first of all, the fact that there's so little money uh, and there's such a high uh, expectations in the call text. So there's even expectations of the clusters using the little money that's for the clusters to propose new financial models and demonstrate them <laughs> across clusters and that, you know, it's basically develop almost like a kind of EOSC for a fraction of the money that's already been spent. So the clusters are quite uh, clear on the point that they're not going to do all, they, you know, they can't promise all of this. They will only uh, submit a proposal text on something that they can uh, achieve. Uh, in terms of the support that you're talking about, so the feedback also from the EOSC Life uh, experience with open calls is you have to help people, first of all, write proposals. So if you, if you want successful proposals, you need uh, uh, assistance, giving people assistance how to write a good proposal, which will be something that makes sense yeah, with this funding that we have. Yeah. And then finally, the uh, help during the, the proposal this hasn't been discussed yet, uh, but I think it's unavoidable. But at the same time, we have to protect some of the consolidation efforts. So there, there's just for your information as well. There's a uh, in the 18 million, which is for the uh, open calls. There's discussions going on with the project officer. If how much of this can be used for doing these kind of activities? So you know, saying this is necessary for. Uh, running the open call, so let's take it out of the 18 million and not out of the remaining. Yeah. Can, can I? Oh, sorry. You can okay, well, make a comment, but we'll hand over to Una as well. Yeah. So maybe I can give some feedback from the yeah. experience of HMC here, mm. because it's a very similar model. Um, for those of you who don't know, HMC is an internal Helmholtz um, project. Mm. We have open calls every year which run across the six research areas of Helmholtz. So we cover all research areas of Helmholtz, which is similar mm. to here. And the projects are two FTEs for two years. Mm. Um, so far we have 22 projects that have been funded. The final round closed for this year. It takes a lot of work to support people in writing applications. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so from my point of view, it's one full FTE month per year minimum, just in supporting proposal writing. Um, also, the research fields aren't equal and they're not starting from equal places. So in PAN, we've suffered a bit from this. Of the 22 funded, we have two that actually got funded and I think Oliver is on the call there, so he can tell you what makes a successful proposal. <laughs> So you need to be careful in wording the text to make mm. sure that it's going mm. to give some equal outcome to all research mm. fields. Um, yeah, and okay. then you have to try and integrate the project outcomes with whatever mm. else is going on afterwards. It's very difficult to hire staff, mm. especially on such short-term contracts mm. who know mm. something about the topic. Mm. It's non-trivial. Yeah, yeah. And in, in your case, are you trying uh, the uh, calls that are uh, the proposals in the open calls that are funded are they supposed to be part of a bigger uh, vision or, or they are they can be independent yeah so in HMC we're quite narrow in what we can fund mm. and this was decided before the project mm. started we can't retroactively change anything now although we're tweaking the wording slightly we're trying to integrate this into the HMC outcomes long term. Mm. So we're trying to follow the projects, make sure they work together, make sure they work with us mm. and form part of the whole ecosystem. Mm. Or whether we succeed in that or not, ask me again in a few years time. 
Okay, that's very. Yeah, we should come back to you for experience. You had a comment. So that, thank you for this because this is reminding me of something. Um, I don't know if you discussed this or if Rudolf meant this with his remark. Is that um, we have similar a similar incubator, which is the imaging platform in in Hyphis, yeah. And the idea is that similar to you, um, the result of those two years should end up in the so-called solutions. Yeah. Yeah. So it's usually it's a library which does cleaning of images and mm -hmm. these kind of things. So in this case, it's it's rather simple to do that mm -hmm. because it's a piece of software and it can be integrated and it has to be maintained. There are certain uh, quality, quality criteria. Mm -hmm. But in, in the case of, of here, mm -hmm. that could be anything. Mm -hmm. And one criteria to, um, to approve it mm -hmm. would be that can this really be taken over by someone with a reasonable amount of time for the future? Because if someone can prove something fantastic mm -hmm. and it takes this, a similar effort for the next mm -hmm. two years to keep it up and running or to keep it mm -hmm. up be used somewhere, it's a useless project yeah. Yeah, because it will go away. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, taking over what the result is, that must be a, a significant criteria for mm. approving such project, if at all, mm. because even this project ends. Mm. How yeah. can we make sure that those 18 mm. millions are spent properly, mm. being having the results mm. being useful? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. even if there is a piece of software, who takes it over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, a good point. An and, and, and the worry I see, one of the worries I see is that this, wor I, I think in the text I've seen something like one of the criteria is that it's in the marketplace. But yeah, that but is a zero. A it's a zero criteria. Exactly. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. and we have to be more. Uh, let's say more. Uh, be, be more precise in what is a what what makes it uh, useful or yeah uh, yeah. And then I I, I appreciate that uh, an independent body is mm. doing the um, um, evaluation, evaluation mm. of the calls. But then how independent is it? Is it so independent that it cannot even <laughs> know whether something is useful or yeah, not? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, so we I have don't to, know yeah. how this no, is no. composed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they'll, they'll, they'll ha it'll have to be. Uh, yeah, they say uh, Rudolf said the science classes have to be involved with independent yeah, but then, yeah. in a way. But I think Georgia has a comment. Georgia, over to you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, I, I think these infra EOS projects should help in building uh, the EOS, right? So uh, we believe that uh, uh, the role of those who will make the proposal and uh, the uh, outcome of the um, second level projects uh, uh, that will uh, um, absorb the 80, 80 millions or whatever uh, share will be open to this uh, sub project should all contribute to, uh, to do something useful, uh, hopefully, for the EOSC. In that way, my approach will be to think um, in, the in the following way, like for the uh, analytical research infrastructure, which is the definition of the estuary landscape that includes all of us, you and, 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 and uh, NFFA and, and the similar things. Um, what would be uh, if we had, uh, you know, the five millions just to dedicate to that a work package structure, an ideal work package structure to push ahead uh, some topics, you know, uh, we heard the data transfer, certainly a big issue is uh, ensuring uh, data quality, uh, I propose the fair by design, the general issue of digitalization of research and etc, and then orient somehow uh, the uh, calls uh, to fulfill uh, these uh, areas of knowledge that we all need to develop uh, and to, 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 to put together the EOSC. So I wouldn't be too afraid that uh, bizarre or uh, inconsistent uh, proposals come up as far as some guidelines, uh, maintaining, of course, all the freedom and all the transversality if somebody is capable of putting together uh, data from different areas or uh, methods from different uh, clusters, uh, that, that is uh, very good. Perhaps it can be very good, but uh, um, I, I would tend to 
uh, orient uh, in, in a number of meaningful uh, directions the, uh, the calls, uh, the secondary calls, let me call uh, like that, that uh, these, um, this project uh, should do. Yeah, that's a good comment. One thing that's uh, dear to my heart is to make sure that the data is open. So, you know, this, this could be one of the criteria. Yeah, okay, okay. But the other, one other thing while you were talking, I was thinking, uh, and I'm, are we, you know, should this, uh, these open calls request more technique or, you know, the, the pr uh, projects that are being proposed, should they? provide uh, an impact for many people, as many people or many uh, communities as possible, you know, like a tool oriented solutions or are they scientific ones? Because this could be, you know, someone could say, I'm, I'm going to analyze this data set and get a publication out of it. It's, it could be a good publication, good science, but is this, for me, this sort of, um, this is not EOSC this, uh, per se, EOSC is actually an enabler and not really uh, just for doing one person science. But I don't know, you know, he, he, we haven't discussed this yet, but I could imagine that uh, this, this is something which sometimes I've seen this in the past. If you have someone just doing one piece of good science, it doesn't have a lot of impact. It's a demonstrator of what's possible, but it doesn't actually advance the, the, the EOSC as, as a, an ecosystem for a large community. I, can I make yeah? a remark? Can I make some enemies here? Yes, <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> no, don't, no, but in a nice way. We <laughs> <laughs> this morning I read a remark from Elon Musk yeah. where he said that uh, there's the, the option always if you have a lot of money to do something fantastic which only helps three people yeah. or something which only gives you a little bit of advantage which helps a million people yeah. and he always would go for the second. Yeah. This is yeah, exactly yeah. what you just said. Yeah, yeah, this is more and the, uh, and I, I, I would tend towards the second exactly. closer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry okay. for saying that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yes, yes, but at the same time, sorry for uh, intervening, at the same time, uh, we badly need uh, with EOSC to uh, show some uh, results. Uh, uh, and although the, the, long la the long term goal is, of course, uh, to create the possibility that uh, interoperable data for diverse from diverse domains will contribute to, to some unthinkable research project today that will directly attack some of the global and complex challenges and etc. But nevertheless, uh, having the research community uh, starting to feel that something is coming back from uh, the uh, fair data space is very important. And then it's the first neighbors that uh, uh, are the readier to, to, to produce that. So you have to go to, to keep the long-term vision, but also trying to make something that works in the short term, because also, you know, in, in 2025, uh, the commission will have to face the idea uh, whether to put another billion for the for the following uh, framework program or uh, not. Uh, now there is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, half a billion uh, from the Commission, half a billion from the EOSC Association in kind contributions, and it has to uh, something has to boil out of that in the short term, whilst keeping, of course, the, the effort for the longer term, because otherwise we don't bring the, the researchers behind us. And that's also my worry of automatizing as much as possible, because otherwise the researchers feel mostly that it's a burden, it's a, a technocratic construction, and they don't buy into that uh, for their activity. Now that, that's a very, uh, very useful and very necessary comment. And I, I could only echo something I heard from the commission, someone in the commission in that the EOS symposium saying that uh, the commissioner who is in charge of this is saying if in a, the shorter term they don't see real results that are scientific or demonstrating the inter, uh, the, uh, inter let's say the interdomain uh, improvement over not just silo working, then there is a chance that this doesn't get doesn't continue in the same way or doesn't continue at all. Yeah. 
I think I think it sounds like the commission. Some people in the commission are not convinced yet. I don't know why, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Andy, okay. I, I just one last comment. Oh, uh, okay. one last comment. So, I just wanted to say that anyway, we will yeah. have to organize ourselves, ourselves yeah. before the people calls. Uh, in a way, mm. we will address them the right way. Mm. Now, at the end of our process, we know that there are some topics we must do and work on. Mm. I don't think. I think we we don't have to wait for this call. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Start yeah. organizing yeah. ourselves to work on, mm -hmm. and probably try to think about what are the things we know we will not manage to solve only by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think the, all what have been launched around the metadata mm. framework, the mm. sample mm. Metadata, metadata instruments, metadata, and so on. This is probably mm. uh, worth incorporating in some of these calls mm -hmm. and the last thing i think we must prepare for some rules guidelines for the way to look for a call and to apply or not for it mm. yeah. yeah as yeah. it is done in the european commission yeah. calls yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know who can do this but i think it's interesting mm. for us to have yeah. this done yeah yeah no, no you, you're absolutely so, right and we mustn't forget that the this call, if it will only be funded from probably the beginning of 2024. So we've got the whole of 2023 to work together for free. <laughs> you want to make, this is the end. Uh, just a question. Yeah? So um, the, the proposal has to be submitted in March. Yes. 23. Yeah. And then when the It probably takes six months for the uh, decision. But, but there's nothing expected from us to do no. during that. Six no, months. no, no, okay. no. This is in waiting, and then the grant agreement, okay, and that's uh, it will that kick off in in uh, twenty twenty four. Yeah. Okay. okay well, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Andy, and thanks to Mahid, the panel, Patrick, Jean-François, Nicolas, and online, of course, Giorgio and Giuseppe. Thank you very much. <laughs>